So today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the newer Grand Seikos, the Green Birch. And just full transparency, this is not my watch. I did borrow it from a friend, so thank you for the trust. And let's get into the review. We have a diameter of 40 millimeters, lug to lug of 46.6, height of 11.9, and a lug width of 22 millimeters. Some of the general specifications for this watch, we're going to have the Caliber 9S A5 uh, in-house high beat movement from Grand Seiko beating away in here. We'll zoom in a little bit more later on that. Some cool upgrades here, like a dual impulse escapement and a over coil for the hairspring. Definitely something you can read up on. It is a pretty cool movement that they did here. What's really nice is this caliber does have an 80 hour power reserve. Other than that, this has a box shaped sapphire crystal, sapphire crystal on the case back as well. We do have 100 meters of state of water resistance with a screw down crown. Uh, and last but not least, this watch retails for $9,100 directly from Grand Seiko. Starting off with the dial here, and this is probably one of the best parts of this watch itself. This is called the Green Birch, and obviously it is a green dial. Um, it has the classic birch texture, which is this very three-dimensional bark-like, or at least bark-inspired dial. Certain angles, you do get these ridges and these veins that pop out and that just look amazing. There's a lot of depth to it. There's a lot of color depth to it, because you can see at certain angles, it goes black. Other angles, a nice, bright, vibrant green. We'll definitely throw in some outside shots later too, because it just looks great in natural light. One thing to note is this is a very deep, deep, rich green. It's not quite a traditional uh, forest green. It's not quite traditional British racing green. It is very much its own color. That's a very deep green with maybe some hints of bluish coloration in there. Looking a little bit more generally, this is Grand Seiko's new Evolution 9 design language. They have uh, beefier markers. Obviously, this is kind of like double-ish, maybe two and a half times marker here at the 12 o'clock. Beefier handset here for the hour hand, which is meant to be a perfect continuation of the hour markers themselves, which it does look cool when it's pretty lined up, and it, it does help differentiate between the hour and the minute hand very easily for legibility purposes. The markers have so many facets and so many angles on them. They just catch the light and shine like crazy all over. Um, it is a very, very good looking watch. I like that they kept the text very minimal here. It's very balanced. You just have Grand Seiko and the Grand Seiko lettering here at the 12, high beat 3680 hours here at the bottom at six o'clock and just some Japan and whatnot here uh, at the very, very bottom near the uh, seconds track. One thing to note is the second track is tucked away here in the chapter ring. It's very, very subtly curved down and it isn't very large. It is just very much out of the way. It's nice because it is off the dial and it lets the dial texture shine without cluttering the dial. But you can see it not only from dead on view, but at certain angles, it obviously pops out a little bit more. So it is still a very legible watch uh, that you can read down to the second, down to the minute. Overall, I think it is a well-executed dial. Of course, it is a little bit of a departure from the classical Grand Seiko language. It almost feels a little bit sportier, uh, a little bit more brutalist, a little bit more uh, aggressive in its just uh, dial geometry, I guess you could say. It does, at the very least, set it apart design-wise from pretty much any other watch on the market. This looks distinctly Grand Seiko. I don't think you can mistake it for much other uh, visually. So looking at the watch, as you can see in the shade, it's a very, very dark, rich green. At some angles, it could almost be black, but it's not quite black. Uh, but again, you do get this very dark green that comes through. Once you move closer to more direct sunlight, you can see a very vibrant, bright green comes out. At certain angles, it still goes black, almost very, very dark green, but in direct, immediate light you do see that very bright green pop out that is just very nice to see and then moving it on as you can see that kind of transition between light and shadow you do get dark green to light green to back to dark green it's just a very interesting transition uh, and again even if you're in the shade you can see some of these beautiful lighter green tones come out that just look great Zooming in here on the dial, you can just see how beautiful this texture is. You get so much detail here. There is a lot of, I guess you can say, distressing to the dial. It is very, very much like tree bark. You know, it, it ages over time. It has like little scratch marks and little grow marks and kind of pieces where the bark has fallen off. So I think they really did capture that dial effect and element really, really well here. Obviously the Grand Seiko text is done very well. The Grand Seiko logo uh, on this model is brushed, so it doesn't really shine that much, but thankfully there is a lot of other stuff that shines on this watch. One thing you can notice is lines cut into the top surface of the marker. This is done on almost any time that Grand Seiko has a dark or a black dial because it helps with contrast. If it was completely uh, black polished on top, it would kind of go black against an already dark dial and it would kind of hinder the legibility. But because of this ribbing texture and the way it catches light, it's almost like, quote unquote, always on. It's always very visible, always very bright and catches uh, your eye uh, very well. Looking at the hour hand, as you can see, it is brushed amazingly well. 
very, very high polish along the sides. I don't see really any blemishes or any marks that are done to it. For some reason, the uh, middle of the hour hand is kind of inlaid with this subtle sparkly texture. Don't really know what that is or what material that is, but I think it looks cool. It helps uh, kind of visually define the middle of the hour hand. I think I maybe would have preferred it if it was like a kind of cut down crevice into the hand and that caught light similar to how the indices do. But I guess this is a half step and I, maybe you can only make hands so thick. I don't know. But as you can see, the angularity and the facets along the hand definitely do match the type of design on the markers. Looking at the hour hand, this is much more traditional Grand Seiko. Very nicely polished as well. Very, very fine brushing on the top of the surface. Looking at the seconds hand, it is beautifully done. It is very rounded, so it has this nice gentle glow about it at pretty much all angles. And it just looks very interesting. There's no flat corners, there's no flat edges, so it just has a different look than almost every other element on the dial, which I think helps draw your eye in. Just one last look at the texture. Again, it's very deep. There are a lot of angles and just color depth to the dial itself. You can see almost at the tips of the, I guess you can say, you know, ridges. They are almost a little bit lighter too, so there is a lot of just color depth on this watch just naturally, and the light definitely helps play with it and bring out a lot of tones you initially don't see. Moving on to the case, we have the very interesting Evolution 9 case style. We have the multifacets along the lug, kind of the polished chamfer here, the polished chamfer on the inside of the lug as well that helps kind of visually thin it out. Very high polished slope bezel, which ends in a flat brushed bezel, which contrasts very nicely and adds a lot of uh, kind of shine and contrast to the very top face of the watch. You have vertical brushing on the lugs, horizontal brushing on the case side. See there is a nice curvature to the case, so it wears really nicely on wrist. Of course, drilled lug holes, which is always cool to see. Case back really isn't too thick, and because of the curvature of the mid case, the case back does sit almost into the wrist, so it's really not noticeable. And of course, the classic sign GS for the crown, a little bit blown out there, but you can tell. Uh, overall, it is a very interesting case shape. Again, you do have the 22 millimeter lugs here. I think it does work well with the design because you do have a beefy handset, beefy markers, and this is kind of not offset, but complemented by the beefy bracelet. It is a 22 millimeter that tapers down to 20, so there's really not a lot of taper. Um, you do have five links, but they're all brushed, so you don't always notice that. It is comfortable on wrist. It doesn't have a lot of kind of like flexibility necessarily. They do articulate well this way, but not quite the other way. Uh, but it does conform nicely on wrist. It drapes nicely and it is comfortable. The bracelet of course uses full links and quarter links. I only need full links to get a good bracelet fit. Um, so that's just how it fit my wrist best. It is Grand Seiko's classic fold over push button deployant clasp with the Grand Seiko Blazon logo. Same as on pretty much every other Grand Seiko watch, no matter what price point. Uh, and it is a pretty good bracelet. Overall, I have been getting more used to it after wearing it more, but it is uh, a little overbearing. I think on straps, this watch shines a little bit better and also wears a little bit better. The movement here, this is probably one of Grand Seiko's nicest looking calibers. Lots on display, lots of bridges, a very uh, symmetrical design there, the balance wheel here at 12 o'clock. It just looks really, really nice and high quality in my opinion. It would have been nice if they included blue screws. For some reason, they just did black polished stainless steel, which while not looking bad, I think the extra blue color to the movement would have looked really nice and really premium. The skeletonization of the rotor is done really well. The text on the outside is uh, very three-dimensional and really well done on a blasted background. All along the six o'clock bridge, you do get a lot of gold lettering, which just adds a nice pop of color and kind of symmetrically balances against this gold colored uh, balance wheel. It is a very beautiful looking movement with a beautiful striping. And I think at this price point, not much else can compete. I think maybe Glass Huta uh, is the only one that really gives it a run for its money at this price. Before we move on, just touching on the crown, it unscrews very nicely. The winding is a really good premium feeling. It's not too whiny, it's not too stiff or sticky feeling. Pulling the crown out, changing the date is very definitive, a very fast date change. And all the way out, again, moving the hands similarly, very easy to do. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing my 40 millimeter Seiko Presage here. Here we have the GS sitting on my six and a half inch wrist. And I think you can tell it sits pretty proportionally. It doesn't overhang the edge of my wrist. It has a pretty short lug to lug. The lugs themselves are fairly thin. So interestingly enough, it feels like a smaller case on wrist, at least visually, until you get to the bracelet, which is very thick and adds that beefiness back. It doesn't sit too high up off the wrist. And because it is fairly flat and conforming, it will slip under a dress cuff very nicely. Um, so overall, it is very comfortable to wear. There aren't any sharp edges. Uh, the bracelet, although there isn't a lot of taper, just 22 to 20, it still is comfortable. Doesn't uh, get in the way or uh, just kind of like 
dig in any weird way. Looking at it from the side view again, you can just see how thin it looks on wrist. It does just conform perfectly to like the shape of the top of your wrist. I think maybe if you have a very large wrist, this can be not so beneficial. It can kind of curve and conform to where your wrist isn't actually curved. So that's something to keep in mind. Definitely maybe try to try this on, case on first, but to me, it wears pretty well and it's very comfortable. And one quick note that I kind of forgot to mention on the case itself is with the finishing, you do have a bevel along the other side, which not only adds uh, some comfort by making the case not as sharp, but it almost visually thins out the watch more. It makes the mid case a little bit thinner, complements the beveled edge here at the top. And I think it just looks good. The more I do wear the bracelet, the more I don't mind it. Um, I feel like it is very much just a Marmite design. You either love it, you hate it, uh, but what I do like about it is it's distinctly its own thing. It doesn't really quite look like anything else. Because of the way the stance is set up, the finishing, just the uh, overall appearance of it, it looks like an Evolution 9 Grand Seiko. Forgive me because I don't have a lot of 22 millimeter straps, but starting off, we do have this nice suede looking strap from Cheapest NATO Straps. I think the tannish brown goldenish color works really well with the green dial it brings out those forest type tones those natural earthy tones and just looks really nice there we have it on wrist obviously you can see as soon as i take the bracelet off it wears even better it wears more compactly the case doesn't look as hugely beefy because you do have those super thin lugs so i think this is a case that actually works really well on straps and this strap definitely has a little bit more of a taper to it which you kind of can't see since i have a small ish wrist instead of going from 22 to 20 it goes from 22 to 18 and I think you can see that a little bit coming together on wrist. Next we have this black silicone NATO from uh, Benchmark Straps on Amazon. I think it looks nice because it is a fairly thin case and at least the way the case back wears it doesn't add too much height to the watch at all and it kind of uh, darkens out the watch a little bit. It makes it a little bit more versatile and a lot more casual. Really, really plants the watch nicely. And with straps like this, I don't think the 22 millimeter lug width looks out of place. I think it looks nice. It blends well with the watch and I don't really mind it at all. I, I think it looks good and it pairs pretty well here. Next, we have this brown uh, leather NATO from Benchmark Straps. Again, brown tones work really well with this watch. It brings out the richness, complements the green really, really nicely, and just feels very earthy, very foresty. Uh, and that's kind of what this watch represents, so it works well. I think it looks pretty amazing here. The stance is not hindered by the 22 millimeter uh, lug width. It sits nicely. It doesn't sit up too high, even though this is a leather NATO. Uh, and I think it looks pretty great on the watch. And last but never least, we have my white archer silicone strap. I think this pairs nicely because as you can see, obviously the indices go very white at certain angles, very black at others. And when they shine bright and white, it pairs well with the strap. What's interesting is this strap is 22 millimeters all the way down. It doesn't have any taper, but I think it still pairs really nicely with the watch. It doesn't make the watch feel too uh, thick or bulbous or out of place. It plants it nicely. And it's kind of a nice contrast to the bracelet. Uh, which again, even though it tapers because it's a little bit thicker than the strap because it's uh, more metal and it helps the kind of case blend into the strap or it, into the bracelet rather, it, it doesn't pair as well, I think. On this strap, it helps it feel a little bit lighter both physically and visually. And I think again, it pairs well, it's fun, it's comfortable, it's a nice summer combo. You can sweat through this, you can swim with this on. Um, really, really nice strap combo here, I think. One thing to note about straps is one thing you might want to do is have a little bit of a, a thicker kind of beginning to the strap here because it can tie in better with the lug. It can fit the lines of the watch a little bit better. And the fact that the lug holes sit a little bit low on the rest of the case, there's a little bit of a height on the top here. It would kind of reduce that difference on wrist. Like, cause when you have it on wrist, you know, the, the strap sits fairly low in comparison to the top of the case. So sometimes if the strap is like super, super thin, it can maybe look too weird, but this thin kind of two and a half millimeter strap still looks good. I think if you bumped the thickness here at the edge up to like three, three and a half, it'd feel a little bit more at home, but not bad as it stands. So moving on to pros and cons, one of the biggest pros for me is just the dial itself. Not only the texture, but the color. It's such a very interesting green. It's not quite traditional dark emerald. It's just a very interesting forest green sometimes, bluish green other times, black sometimes. It's, it's a very natural living dial and it's very interesting to see. It, it stands out from other colors you've already seen. It definitely will stand out from other watches you already own. And I like that. And the texture itself is just very cool. Of course, it's supposed to be reminiscent of uh, the bark of a tree. And it definitely does look like that. It has a texture that appears and disappears at certain angles. The pattern itself is very changing, very lively. And that pairs perfectly with the coloration of it too. You get 
green at some angles, you get texture at some angles, you get both at some angles. It is just a beautifully living dial that will always keep you interested. Another big pro for this watch, I think, is just the movement. I don't think this movement is getting the kind of press that it deserves. It is a high beat movement, which not many companies are making anymore. It has 80 hour power reserve, which is like a Ferrari getting 60 miles to the gallon. It's just kind of insane. Um, and on top of that, it's basically a new mechanical movement style. It is a new escapement style that's furthering watchmaking. It's a blend between like a Swiss lever escapement and a Daniels coaxial escapement. And I think that's something that if you want to read up on it more, it's very, very interesting to read into and very uh, awesome that Grand Seiko is pushing forward the watchmaking store. And last but not least, I just think the watch is very unique. Of course, the color, of course, the fact that it's a Grand Seiko, uh, but I think it's styling too. It doesn't look like any other watch out there. I don't think you can, I don't think mistake it for a Rolex, mistake it for a Omega, mistake it for uh, really any other brand at the same price. It definitely looks like its own design language, its own uh, product, and I'm glad for that. If you put this next to other watches in your box, it will look distinctly like its own thing. And I think that's important, especially when you start getting a bigger collection. And even breaking it down further, it is unique in the Grand Seiko catalog itself. It is a newer design language, it is more modernized, it is not as traditional and almost vintage leaning as the kind of current production models are. This is one of Grand Seiko's first truly modern uh, case designs and dial design languages and it definitely shows. It is a step forward for the brand, it is a kind of a, I guess, insight into what direction they may be heading. So moving on to cons, and one of the biggest cons for me is not really even to do with the watch itself, it's the way the watch was released. So this watch is a boutique online exclusive. You cannot buy it in stores, you cannot buy it in AD. You exclusively have to buy it from the online boutique website and have it shipped to your door, and you can technically ship it to a boutique as well. Uh, but it's just very weird that you really can't see this watch in person before purchasing it in full. Uh, the online boutique, at least in the US where I'm based, is very lenient where you kind of get a 14 day return policy if you don't like the watch. But because this dial color is so unique, the texture is so interesting, the watch design in terms of the bracelet and the way it fits on wrist is very untraditional and something you're maybe not used to. Uh, it's weird to not be able to try it on. So I don't think it should have been released only online, but that's what we have to deal with. Another con for the watch is I think the design is just very, you either love it or you hate it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is a distinctly modern Grand Seiko design. It of course takes cues from the past and where it's been, and it has that distinct Japanese and Grand Seiko flair about it, but it is completely new. It has a more harsh handset, the case shape is different, again, the bracelet is a little bit more beefy, it's 22 millimeters. These themselves are thicker and more multifaceted, and it might come across as a little brutalist to you. Maybe you don't like the uh, somewhat inelegance of that styling. Grand Seiko's, for most of the catalog, almost leans uh, casual dressy, whereas this one goes like casual sporty in a way. Maybe we'll have very strong opinions of even before seeing it, and I definitely was in that camp. I hated the design language, I hated the style of the, the dial, the hands, the everything before seeing it. And even after seeing it, I still wasn't in love, but after trying one on, owning one for a longer period of time, actually just wearing the watch, I understood it. It made sense. It worked well together. Again, the hour hand is a complete extension of the indice. It looks nice. It is harmonious within its own design. Unfortunately, that's something you kind of have to experience in person, and with this watch, you can't. Another con for the watch is the bracelet. I'm not still completely sold on it yet. Uh, the 22 millimeter stance is interesting. I think it gives the Birch series, Evolution 9 series, its own footprint, its own style, its own look. But because it's so kind of untraditional, it's something we're not used to, 40 millimeter watches usually don't come with 22 millimeter lugs. Uh, it feels a little bit alien, it feels a little bit weird. It is harmonious, it does feel comfortable on wrist, it is ergonomic, uh, but because it doesn't taper that much, because it is uh, a little bit more something we're not used to, it will take time to get used to. Again, the more time I've spent with the bracelet and wearing the watch and uh, just experiencing it, I've come to like it more and more, whereas originally I just kind of hated the design. So if you're already 50-50 on the bracelet, just give it a try, you might end up liking it, but I do like the watch a lot more on straps and that's maybe just where the kind of design shines for you. Final thoughts on this watch, and I think it is fantastic. It is a very, very well made, fantastically executed Grand Seiko. And I know it is in a price range that a lot of people aren't used to seeing Grand Seiko in, but 
It's going to continue, not because Grand Seiko is necessarily moving up market, just offering a step up from their normal range with more bells and whistles. It has a higher end, higher R&D movement. It's more accurate in theory. You know, it has a higher power reserve. It's more beautifully finished. Um, and again, if you look into the movement technology, it's pretty awesome the advances they've made they're still fantastic pieces at the you know four to six seven thousand dollar price point that still knock other brand socks off but this watch in particular i think is very well executed the dial is beautiful it's distinctly grand seiko i like how uh i guess visceral they've made the texture grand seiko in recent years at least to me has become more known for uh textured and colored dials more than anything and the fact that they keep doing so and they almost are going further into that direction, I love to see because almost no other luxury brand does texture to the dials at all. I think this was a well-needed watch uh, in Grand Seiko's lineup. It's always nice to add some color, but it's not too like candy fake green to where it looks ridiculous and pops out too much on wrist. It is versatile enough for everyday wear. The more I wore this watch, the more I liked it. Uh, and I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. If you're interested in this watch at all, I think you should give it a try. Uh, it can't hurt. Uh, I mean, the $9,100 might hurt, but you know, watches are watches. Uh, and the, you know, the boutique online has a 14 day return policy. So if you really just don't fall in love with it, return it, that's okay. I think Grand Seiko did a very good job with this watch overall. And I really don't have much bad to say about it. Interested to hear what you guys have to say. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you kind of undecided? Uh, let me know. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thank you as always for watching the video. I uh, hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.